Manhattan, New York, America's fastest growing community. Home, place of business, playground for the millions who live in Nassau and Suffolk counties. But Long Island wasn't always like this. Not many years ago, it was a quiet, semi-rural community, just a place where things were going to happen. And this is our story. Long Island, New York, specifically the east end of Long Island, which was once primarily a sleepy fishing community. Now it's more well known as being home of the Hamptons. And when people think of the Hamptons, they typically picture you know, insane wealth, massive houses, amazing beaches. Of course, you have your beach bars, your roadside lobster roll stands and such. Military bases and conspiracy theories, including time travel, child abduction, mind control, and teleportation did not exactly come to mind. And Montauk specifically, what was once a small sleepy fishing town, is now a celebrity and mega mansion infested summer party town. But most people would tend to overlook a lot of the things that are hiding in plain sight. Now in Montauk, the landmark that everyone knows, even if they've never even been to Montauk, is the Montauk Lighthouse. However, other than locals, the majority of people have no idea that right next to the lighthouse lies a massive decommissioned military base known as Camp Hero. Now it's known as Camp Hero State Park. And this park is massive. It's over 700 acres with tons of untouched coastline with massive 50 foot bluffs and endless views of the ocean and out to the lighthouse. Now Camp Hero has been around for a while and it's had several phases of use and construction. The first major phase was during the start of World War II from 1942 through 1957 when it was primarily used for coastal defense. Following that phase, the Air Force took control of Camp Hero and operated it as the 773rd Aircraft Control and Warning before becoming the 26th Air Division and operating as an Air Direction Center. Now one of the main features that everybody who's been to Camp Hero knows and you know maybe even people that haven't been there is the massive radar tower and radar dish that was installed in 1958. That brought the base into the National Defense Network and a major part of the NORAD defense system. It was renamed yet again in 1963 to the 773rd Radar Squadron SAGE until it was officially quote unquote shut down again in 1980. More on that later. You know, what makes this park really unique is that many of the original military bu buildings are scattered throughout the park, and most notably the massive radar tower. It's a SAGE radar tower, which stands for Semi-Automatic Ground Environment. It's a Cold War era early warning system for the, for the U.S. defense systems. It's said that it would give the U.S. a 30-minute advance warning of any kind of enemy vessels, in this case, German submarines or warships. Now while the radar tower is an obvious standout, there's many other strange things, pun intended, scattered throughout the park. About half a mile from the radar tower are a cluster of buildings from the first phase of the base which resemble a small coastal fishing village. We're disguised to look like a New England fishing village from the air, so if enemy aircraft were to come over, the guns would come up and they would just blast them right out of the sky. The gymnasium was even hidden to look like a church. This area is often referred to as the downtown of Camp Hero. And a short distance from the radar tower are several massive gun batteries hidden in man-made hillsides. These guns were either 16-inch or 6-inch cannons that could shoot enormous shells over 25 miles out to sea to take out German warships and submarines. It's said there's a massive tunnel system that runs through the base and between the gun batteries for troops to easily go between the different gun batteries. Now the government has never officially confirmed that there are these underground tunnels, but in this news video there's a caretaker of the park that actually cons confirms their existence. In the event there was any kind of an attack going on, uh, they could communicate and go between these installations safely underground. They did fire the guns off now and then just for practice. The shock waves went all the way back to town, which is about six miles. There's some reports that say windows cracked. And this is where some of the conspiracy theories start about Camp Hero. The military has never publicly acknowledged there's an underground complex at the base. However, a lot of these former workers say they've been inside some of these tunnels, and some of them are as long as 500 feet. And while the land 
of the base is now a state park, the federal government still owns everything underground. Now back to those strange things I mentioned earlier. While many locals often spoke about animals going crazy, people becoming sick and electronics suddenly dying due to the radar dish, conspiracy theories went into overdrive when a guy named Preston Nichols published a book titled The Montauk Project, Experiments in Time in 1992. The book spoke of teleportation, time travel, alien technology, interplanetary travel, mind control experiments, and child abduction. You know, your everyday things in Long Island. Nichols claims to have been a radar tech there and worked closely on the Montauk's experiments. In this grainy video from 1994, shortly after the base was closed down and still relatively intact, Nichols narrated a tour of the base. In this video, he speaks of UFO landing pads, offices for the reptilian, a Timothy Leary inspired psychedelic painted experiment house for mind control, and of course, the radar tower. I better let him use his own words. This is the bunker where the Montauk Boys project was done. This is where the boys were actually stripped of their mind and the mind was reformed through computers and reinserted in the body of the boy. Now, this next office is the secretary for the alien. Across the way was the alien's office, a reptilian that sits on the floor from the AIO computer. Somebody pulled these chassis out for well, what we don't know. We're now seeing new wiring that goes up to the roof. Some of this wiring has dates of like 89 on it. This wire we're looking at here is dated 1988. It has a nick in it to make it look used. The nick is just deep enough so it doesn't hurt the function of the wiring, but it looks old. They would do this to camouflage it so nobody would notice it. But if you look at the date and know how to read the date codes, you realize it's new wire. We're now inside the UFO landing pad or FPS-6 radar tower. This is early mind control in these rooms. This is the black and white room. I've seen pictures of a room just like this in the Timothy Leary report that Mr. Leary used a room like this to enhance LSD experiments. He said the radar was how thoughts and people were teleported to other location. He claimed the government was abducting children in the area and turning them into super soldiers under government mind control. This group of abducted kids was to be known as the Montauk Boys. And while the base officially shut down in 1994, many people said it has been active well beyond that. In fact, as recently as 2011, there have been reports of the radar dish changing direction. Some news that did actually make it out of Montauk came in 2008. A deformed creature washed up on the shore of Ditch Plains Beach in Montauk, and it was affectionately named the Montauk Monster. Experts say it's just a badly deformed and decayed raccoon, but you be the judge. This definitely does not look like any kind of raccoon I've seen before. And this just further fueled conspiracy theories because Plum Island, which is another hotbed of conspiracy theories, which is the United States Animal Testing Facility, which is right off the coast of Montauk. People assumed it was an experiment gone wrong and this creature escaped from there and had something to do with the base. More conspiracy theories started popping up again when in 2015, Montauk Chronicles was featured on Discovery Channel. Then there was a follow-up in 2018 on History Channel's Dark Files. This took you through some of the uh, more recent conspiracy theories and some of the up-to-date research that was done around Camp Hero. If this sounds like some bizarre science fiction fantasy, you wouldn't be far off. You may even say this sounds vaguely familiar. A kidnapped child, superpowers, secret government agency in a creepy looking building. What many people do not know is that the hit Netflix show Stranger Things, which originally sold to Netflix under the name Montauk. When the creators of Stranger Things pitched a show to Netflix, they created a Stephen King inspired book with the radar tower right on the cover. The original setting of the show took place in Montauk before it was moved to the fictional setting of Hawkins, Indiana. This set off a new wave of conspiracy theories and reignited people's interest in the base. You know, one quick search of YouTube will see countless Stranger Things styled YouTube videos of people breaking in and exploring a lot of the different areas. Now, 
If you're in, ever in the area or you're out in Montauk, I highly, highly recommend checking out Camp Hero. It's such a surreal setting, it's hidden in plain sight. Most people completely pass this by on their way to the Montauk Lighthouse. And what's crazy about Camp Hero is that you're in the middle of Montauk, some of the most expensive real estate in the country. Beachfront property is next to impossible, and here you have more than a couple miles of just pristine, untouched beach that you have access to going through the park. The coastline and the views are just amazing, and it's definitely something you're not going to see anywhere else in the Hamptons. If you do explore further, just beware of the ticks, since you know Plum Island is nearby. I'll let you go down that rabbit hole on your own if you ever want to look up Lyme disease related to Plum Island. But I hope you check it out. I been there a couple times now and every time I'm there I find something new. Sadly I have not found any alien activity but it's still just a rare surreal and bizarre place. Um, I've never seen anything like it anywhere else in the country or the world for that matter especially being in the middle of you know one of the most popular beach towns in America. So check it out Camp Hero Montauk. So I couldn't help myself with making my own Stranger Things video. So here it is.